I'm Brigadier General Andrea Tallis, your Director of Security Forces. We're coming out of two decades of successful combat operations, but we know that continuous war and high ops tempo takes a toll, that the world keeps getting smaller, and that the threats we normally associate with downrange operations are able to reach us in areas we used to call safe havens. To ensure that our nation maintains an unfair advantage, we're committed to giving you the capabilities you need to successfully execute our security forces mission. That means deliberately developing our defenders to execute mission command under a wide range of scenarios, to train our forces to operate in contested environments and to empower our non-commissioned officer to take ownership of their squadron's ability to detect, delay, and defeat threats to air power. This undertaking is Reconstitute Defender, and it impacts every command, squadron, and defender. We're on a mission to make you more ready and more lethal for today and tomorrow's fight by ensuring all defenders receive training appropriate to your rank and skill level, that you have the most capable weapons, communication systems, and equipment, and more importantly, that our human weapon system is optimized to successfully defend the base. I'd like to introduce my boss, Lieutenant General Cooper, who's a tireless advocate for our 38,000 defenders, and he'll share his thoughts on the mission we're on and what we all must do to ensure success. General, over to you. Thank you, General Tullis. First, let me sincerely thank each and every defender for your selfless service to our nation. I know you have a long and proud heritage, and our nation has witnessed countless heroic acts from our defenders. From your two Air Force Cross recipients during the Vietnam conflict to the hundreds of Bronze Star recipients since the attacks of 9-11, to your continued and unwavering sacrifices in Iraq, Afghanistan, and as you run to the sound of gunfire both at home and overseas. We're extremely proud of you, the history you embody, and the culture you continue to forge as security forces. These sacrifices and heroic acts do not just occur on the battlefield. The challenges and threats facing our installations daily cannot be understated. You are conducting critical operations 24-7, whether that means securing nuclear convoys across our open roads, protecting our airfields so we can train and project power, controlling installation access, protecting our critical resources, protecting our nation's military forces and their families, and enforcing the law. The enormous responsibility levied upon you to defend the base while still fulfilling your role as Air Force ambassadors, being professional and courteous yet assertive is what makes you extraordinary. The long hours you stand watch, the lost weekends and holidays, the long deployments are quietly accepted without fanfare or expectation of gratitude. I'm reminded daily of the many challenges you face, and I take every opportunity to share your story. Often this story doesn't garner media attention, but trust me, the department's senior leadership takes note. What we see and read in your reports are that threats to our air bases are not limited to combat zones, deployed areas, or even overseas locations. You face threats at your home installations too. In your line of work, you recognize that it's not a matter of whether something will happen, it's a matter of when it will happen, which is why you must be prepared to respond to a hostile act every single day. One of the more recent challenging areas we face is installation access control. Your installation defense plan state this is one of the more likely locations for threats to emanate, our first line of defense. And it's also where we typically ask our youngest defenders to make the split-second decisions and to employ tactics, techniques, and procedures to defeat those hostile acts. We are working hard with the engineers and other partners across the Air Force to increase the physical security measures at entry control points and deliver the technology to assist you with situational awareness and non-lethal options. We rely on you to evaluate the terrain on your post every day with a critical eye and to identify physical security vulnerabilities. Our Chief of Staff has tasked me to restore readiness, increase lethality, close requirements gaps, and revitalize our security forces squadron. Reconstitute Defender is our plan to execute the Chief's intent. And once published, I encourage each of you to read Reconstitute Defender. We're working to improve manpower, shortfalls, overhaul your formal and readiness training, and working to deliver a stable and predictable eight-hour shift schedule with training and protected time off incorporated into the construct. A few squadrons are already testing the new shift schedule construct with good results. In 2018, we've secured funding to upgrade your rifles, grenade launchers, the new handgun, and JLTVs, as well as numerous other modernization efforts. Further, we have already expanded a readiness training center attendance to all defenders to include routine proficiency training along with pre-deployment training. All these efforts are geared to make you bigger, stronger, faster, and more confident in your core mission 
which is defending the base. But I need your help, defenders. The backbone of the security forces career field is the enlisted corps, and we ask our NCOs to carry a significant amount of the responsibility. We rely on NCOs to ensure standards and disciplines are enforced, to be responsible for the training and readiness of their assigned teams, and to be firm but fair. We expect NCOs to take immediate corrective actions when an airman deviates from policy, guidance, and established procedures. We need NCOs to seize the initiative, act independently, and never walk by a problem, no matter how small. For our NCOs to be successful, our officers and senior NCOs must create an environment that cultivates positive leadership and pushes responsibility down to the lowest proper level. You must set the example, enforce standards, and set the conditions so your NCOs feel and accept responsibility for the training and readiness of their defenders. If an NCO fails to meet your expectations, hold them accountable. Accountability enables NCOs to learn from their mistakes and reinforces the positive leadership skills of the vast majority of the NCOs who are performing exceptionally well every day. The bottom line, defenders, I'm asking you to focus on leading your airmen to be the best at defending the base. I ask you to dig deep and ask yourself, are my airmen as ready as they need to be to defend the base? If not, are you conducting local exercises? Are you conducting proficiency firing with your team? Are you doing everything you can to make your team, your flight, your shift, your squadron, the best it can be at defending the base? The Air Force expects it from you. Frankly, gang, you expect it from you. We have a great opportunity here, defenders. Our time is now. Seize this opportunity to make every single defender better, every single day. Thank you for what you do every day to defend the base. You are a critical part to the Air Force mission. Defense for Fortis.